Hi, I'm Jennifer. Welcome to Orton Gillingham Coaching. Today, let's talk about the C and G rule, which is when C says S and G says J instead of the normal K and G. So we're going to talk about when to teach it, how to teach it, and some activities as well. So what is the C and G rule? The C and G rule are when a C or a G are followed by an E, I, or Y, it makes the C say S and the G say J as in city or gym. Normally, a C will say k as in cat, and a G will say g as in goat. So this, when it's followed by an E, I, or Y, a C or G are followed by an E, I, or Y, it changes the sound of the letter, and it's a rule that we can teach students. So when do we teach the C and G rule? We've taught up here in our, you know, in our first phonogram cards that C says k and G says g. But coming down here, we've taught all of our phonogram cards mostly. Uh, we've taught the magic E. We've taught your floss rule. We're starting with our short vowel rules. Um, should be final blends, beginning blends. So you should be starting to formulate some things. You've even got your magic E syllables going. This doesn't mean that the soft, the hard C and G and the soft C and G is easy to learn. You're still probably in, you know, a beginning uh, reading stage, but down here before our, our DGE phonogram card, because DGE says J as an edge, so before we teach that, we start to teach, hey, the C and G rule, and it makes this, this happen to the C and G. Um, it's also important to note that the E, I, or Y is after the C or G. In other words, like city, C, I, or a G, G, Y, or G, E, Jim, will that, it's, it's the E, I, or Y is after it. And I'm pointing this out because you might get a word like ignite, where it's an I before a G. That is not, that makes the G stay hard. It's after in a word like gist, it makes it turn hard. So we want to, or soft. So we want to be sure to point that out. Make sure that, that your student's very aware of where the E, I, or Y falls. That's important. I have also seen people say, instead of an E, I, or Y after the C or G, they'll say, if you see a C or a G before an E, I, or Y, then you change the E, I, the spelling to S or K or J. S or J. Um, but I like to say it is after because of that when you have an I before a G. I think it just gets too confusing. So personally, I always use it, if you see an E, I, or Y following after a C or a G, most of the time there are exceptions, especially in the G, be sure that they understand where it, the placement is. G has a lot of exceptions. You're gonna get the student saying, well, what about gift? What about get? What about piggy? What about begin? Um, yeah, there's a lot of exceptions there. So what we want to make sure and say is it's a general rule. You can follow it most of the time, but certainly there are exceptions. I don't know very many in the C, um, but G has a lot. So how do we teach the C and G rule? One of the first things I always do is introduce Gentle Cindy. I think a lot of people are familiar with her, but Gentle Cindy has E, I's, and Y's for her nose and mouth and eyes, and then she has C and G for hair. And so Gentle Cindy is just a great little reminder, photo picture to go along with this rule. And I think it helps. I always leave them a picture of it as well. The other thing I do is I always have a, a thing of cards. I print all rules. And, and even Revlock everything on these index cards with a punch hole, and I put it on little rings for my students. It's, it's a great way for them to be able to look and see the rule. And yes, it's okay for them to continue to look at the rule as long as they need to, to understand. Eventually they'll stop looking at the card and they'll just do it, but always okay. So I introduce the rule, I give them that card, then I have a deck of cards. We do need to have some ground rules for teaching C and G rule because it is fairly early in the scope and sequence as I showed earlier. You need to understand that these some of these words can be complicated. So we want to really ease into words. And the other thing is I have a deck of cards. So 
um, the first thing we would do is just go through the cards, C's together and G's together. Don't, don't mix them up yet. All we want them to get used to doing is saying S, K, S, K, 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 S, okay? And then we got our, our, our G's and we go G, J, J, G, 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 <laughs> J, and then we won't introduce this one just yet, but DGE also says J, and we would put that in eventually, as well as GE says J, so, but that's in there. So we want us introduce, yeah, GE says J, and DGE says J, but I was going to see where my, I was thinking my scope and sequence was there, and I was going to look at where the J rule is, but it's down here, so we don't get to that for a while, but it makes it so much easier when they've already learned this, and they then get down to the J rule. It's, it makes it, it's compounding, and that's what OG is, is it's cumulative, and so by the time they get to something else, it's like, oh yeah, I've heard of that. So we're not just throwing things at them all the time. The other thing I'd like to point out is when we are teaching C and G rule and we're starting to read words, you can't start with a word like bandage and expect them to get it. VCCV words are down here. So they haven't even started dividing syllables yet. So that's why we wanna start off with our, our phonogram cards and ease into words over time. And it's just like anything we're doing, we, we could have them reading, it depends on their level, especially if you're with a third grader or fourth grader, certainly they should be able to apply this rule and, and start getting it much quicker than, but if you're dealing with a younger child, you can't expect them to start reading words like suffice, you know, and not, not that you would, but just making sure that we say a word like face, if, since they've had magic E, now that they know the CE, you know, C says, now we can start to say, see, ice, face. That's when we just really ease into some of these words, but they can't read it. You have to help them. So we ha that's what we're gonna talk about are some activities that we could do to help them. So getting into some activities we could use with the C and G rule, one of the things I've created that I think is fun is um, bingo. And the only thing about bingo in a C and G is remember, they can't tell the difference, you know, between the sound and, so you have to show the word. So if you call on it, you say cup, cup. So this is interactive because it's, they're hearing it, they're seeing it, and then they're, they're tactile finding it. So I like doing this bingo because I think they have fun with it. Another activity is sorting. So one thing you could do, I don't, it depends on the age. Some of these words may not be appropriate, so you can cut them out as well and make them sim super simple to getting a little more difficult. Um, on this, I try to keep the words as simple as possible for my teachings. Um, so I just have a sheet where they can either write the words, G, good, goes under hard, giant goes under soft, germs goes under soft. So they, they look at it and put it where it's supposed to go. Somebody should say it out loud, good. They should say good, and then they write good. Or they take the word good and put it up here. So they're, they're doing the three-pronged approach with it. Also, you could do pictures. You could have pictures associated with the words. So here you have garden. And so I say garden, and then we talk about, so what is that? Garden, what do you hear? What's, where is it? The first letter is G. The first letter is G is saying G. That's a hard G. Then you have Jim. Jim. It's just associating pictures with the word. And then it's, again, it's kind of another fun way to do it. But, and then the last thing I have is just a list of words. You know, the E, I, Y words. Same with hard and soft C. We have separately. I'm not doing these together. I'm doing them separate. Hard and soft C, some words for them to go through. You can just make this a worksheet, but I would encourage them to read the words out loud, say them, then write them or sort them. 
and then you come look at it. It depends on if you're in a group situation or if you're one-on-one. -on -one. If you're one-on-one, -on -one, this is a nice way to, to talk about things while they're doing something so that it's not always just not doing something. Again, I have the pictures. Cold, k cold. Where is it? What does that say? Why does it say k instead of s? You have the cat, you have the rice. Why is that s? It's followed by an E. So there's the E. And another list going through all these words. So the, just a whole list of words that we can read, manipulate, divide, talk about, and, and conquer. Another activity we can do is using these phonogram cards again, using our cards, just have them sort them out in piles. The other thing I like to do is real and nonsense. This comes from Scope and Sequence Workbook 1. We want to do real and nonsense words. We don't want kids just memorizing. We want them to know the rule. So this particular worksheet is on the soft C and G, or it's on the, yeah, it's on soft C and G. So it has C on this side, G on this side. Um, soft C says S, hard G, hard C says K. So we have them write that up here. And then these are real words. They go in and just say the sound it's making. And then you have a list of nonsense. So they would go in, calf is the nonsense word, C-A-F-F. -F. And so they would just write a K sound, a K. And then over here they'd write S. So these all have um, answer sheets as well for you. <laughs> uh, and then same with G. We have um, G on this side. And so we have them go through and just say what sound it's making. As you could tell in most of these activities that I'm giving you right now, we're trying to concentrate on the sounds that the C and G make when they get soft. We don't necessarily need them reading words so much as looking at the words and seeing the sounds that they're making. So in this exercise, they're saying, they hopefully they would be lovely if they could read icy, but they may not know that yet, They but they see the Y after that C and so, they're, they're saying what sound that makes. When, and, and same when they're seeing the k calf. They're, they're seeing it followed by an A. So you may need to go through these worksheets with them to begin with. They may not be able to do this and then give it to them again and they can do it again. But the, the important part on these worksheets is that they're understanding the sound it makes. They're repeating it out loud um, and they're writing the sound that it's making. Another exercise we could do, this is an auditory exercise. You're going to say a word out loud and they can give a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whether it follows the rule. And you're trying to get automaticity here. You're trying to get them fast at it, of hearing it. So you would say, Jim, yes. Calf, no. Cost, no. Gist, yes. You know, so, and, and you, if I don't mix them up like that <laughs> to begin with, by the way. I would do all C words and all G words. Then maybe later I might mix some up, but it's, it's really important that they hear the S and they hear the J. So I just mixed them up, but normally I wouldn't do that. So, but this is an auditory exercise to get them hearing it. One group exercise that I think is kind of fun is that the students create a story. You really could do it just one-on-one -on -one tutoring where you come up with a sentence and they come up with a sentence. But um, so each person comes up with using as many CNG words. If, for instance, I saw a face in a window. The window was in the city. The window was on a stage. So you, everybody adds a sentence until it becomes a full story. And it could be fun. Something you could do as far as matching another matching game, let's just say germs, and you have the word germs on a card, big, and then you have this little picture of germs, and they match them up. And so even though it's on the bottom, they're, they're matching the words up, but they're also matching the picture up, pictures up, and so it's giving them picture to word association. So that could be good for younger kids to see the picture, see the word, match them up. And then you say the word cat, do you see CA? And see, then you can also have a conversation about, what do you see, CA? What would that, what would that sound be, K, because it's followed by an A? So Same. another activity is you have a bag, a mystery bag, and you put either pictures or actual objects, just toy objects, um, that go with the CNG rule. Pictures are gonna be easier, but you could 
if you could find some cool stuff and throw it in a bag like a, a little cat or a, a gem, you know, or a coin. Um, you could put a page of a book and fold it up or something. I don't know, but there, you could put it, you could actually put things in the bag with the pictures and do both, or you could just put pictures. Uh, but it's just, it's just a fun tactile thing to do, to pull out a picture of a cat and then say, oh, that's, that says K because it's C-A, or pull out the picture of the gym. Oh, that's G-Y, so it's gym. But again, it's just a, a way to be tactile with it and, and make it more fun. Another activity, and this is really probably for um, a group setting, but it could be just you and, the, and a student, or especially if you had a couple of students, but not a ton, you could, you could participate too, but charades, act out things that are C and G and let them holler out the word and you know play like a Pictionary, but it's with C and G words. And so then you're, you of course have to also talk about what it was. You wanna get it as kinesthetic. And so be sure there's C in the word. If you can write it, write it. Um, but you, you at least write the sound of the word or J. So wanna make it as interactive as possible, but also wanna make it fun. And charades is always fun. Just gets them up out of the chair and moving. The last activity is a kind of fun one. I have not done this, but I did. I did read it, and I thought it was cute, so I'm going to mention it. Um, it's fishing, fishing for words. So you get a little pole with a magnet on the bottom, and you you get some sheets of paper, get these pictures or or just words, card words, and you put magnets on them and have them fish it and pull it up, and you'll have a word like scent. And then they have to say what it says. Um, if you can, if they can read it, great. If not, you want them to say that says because it's followed by the e. Then you can maybe have them do a sentence at the end if they're advanced enough. But have them write a sentence using the words they pulled out or two words they pulled out. But you could also just do this with um, the phonograms. You know, like the the ce, and have them pull it out and say that says that says g. That's, you know, so a little fishing pond with that. But it's, it's nice and tactile. It's nice and fun to pull things out and do things. And you can do that in a tutoring session or in a group setting. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you'll like and subscribe and go to my blog, ogforall.com, and visit the workbook store.